Hello and welcome to a video on the basics of fiber mesh. In this video I just want to cover the basics of using fiber mesh and also what you can do with the fibers once they become a subtool. So let's begin at taking a look at our dog. You may have noticed in the project menu of our lightbox we already have two dogs with fibers created on them. Let's go ahead and redo construct this with our own little twist. So I'm going to open up my fiber mesh sub palette and click on our preview button. You'll notice that ZBrush instantly creates fibers around the whole dog. I actually want to control where I want to put fibers, so I'm going to do this by masking. So I'm going to quickly just unmask some areas of our dog so that I can control where I want the fibers to be and not to be. So once I have something that I'm looking for, I'm going to go ahead and hit the preview button again. You can see that the dog's fibers now are only being created where there's a mask. This is being controlled by our by mask slider. Also take note of the by area slider. When I turn this up, you'll see what this will do. By area is taking the underlining geometry and taking a look at the polygon sizes and constructing hair based on the size of our polygons. So in this general region, the polygons are larger, which then creates a longer and larger fiber. And in this region, the polygons are smaller, which then creates a shorter and skinnier fiber. So let's just knock that slider down just a bit so that we have less of by area. The next thing I might want to do is adjust my length. So I'm going to do some quick length adjustments. And the next thing I want to adjust is our coverage. What coverage is doing is widening our fibers. So I don't want to have them this wide, so we're going to drop that down a little bit. The next thing I want to do is adjust some of my colors. So I'm going to click on my tip color and give our dog a little bit of a brown tone color to it. Don't forget you can also change your base color to any color that you wish and apply more of your base color or less of your base color. The next thing I want to adjust is my gravity. So by clicking our slider, the higher we go, of course the fibers are going to fall further down the direction. Now gravity is controlled by the camera angle to the object. So for example, I was to switch my dog to be facing this way towards the downward slope of the camera and upgrade my gravity, you'll notice that when I turn to the side, all the fibers are facing that direction, which is the front of the dog. So obviously I would like to have my fibers facing this direction. The next I want to take a look at is do I want any profiles? So when we turn this slider up, ZBrush is automatically going to give you a warning. What's happening is our fibers now, instead of being just one face, they actually have four because I've set the slider to four. Take note that once you turn this to higher than one, you can no longer use the sides and radius in the render part of fibers. So I like to keep this at one so that I have the option to use my sides and radius when I go to render my fibers. The next thing I might want to take a look at are my segments. So when I turn this to something like six, we're adding more segments to our dog, which is also going to help us create a little bit different length and flow to our fibers. So I like what we have here. Let's go ahead and click our accept button. Okay, ZBrush is asking if we'd like to put ourselves in fast preview mode. I'm going to go ahead and click yes. Now that we've converted our fiber mesh, into a subtool. Let's see what else we can do with this. Opening up our fiber mesh sub palette, you can see the only options now available are our rendering options for BPR. In here, we can control how many times each fiber needs to subdivide, how many sides each fiber is going to be, and how big the radius will be at the BPR render, along with controlling our root and our tip anisotropic. We also have the capability of using our, any of our selection brushes to hide and show different parts of our fibers. We can even hold our control key and mask off different parts of our dog's fibers. On top of that, opening up our masking sub palette, we can now use this curve along with a fiber mask and unmask to manipulate how we want this dog to be masked off. So by doing this, I can switch to any color and begin to paint my fibers. You may notice that the roots are not completely being painted green due to our curve. So let's go ahead and see what happens if we go the other way. And we'll switch to another color. You can see now only the tips can be colored. A key note the difference between using these features for masking and using your brush to mask is once a mask is applied to any part of the fiber, the entire fiber is masked off. Unlike these options, with the mask already applied, I can even use the fiber on mask and you can see now that ZBrush has kept the roots masked, but the tips are now unmasked so that I can paint them. 
Don't forget that there are two preloaded dog projects within the project folder of Lightbox. These are great to use to practice with the new groom brushes.